Professor Michael Hurst is the head of the Hotel and Catering Management Studies School at Florida's International University. Here he lectures on hospitality management. The talk comes on two videotapes and we suggest that there's time for discussion in between those sections. The interesting thing about FIU that, that makes it very much better than, than Cornell or Michigan State, and I did go to Michigan State, uh, that makes it very much better is that the entire faculty not only have the academic credentials to teach, have the degrees necessary to teach, but also are practicing in the industry. They're hotel operators, they're restaurant operators, they're, they're nightclub owners, they are consultants that, that teach incidentally. Uh, they are not doing consulting work as teachers, they are consultants primarily and they teach uh, in addition just a little bit. So it's people that are actively tuned to the industry and you know that's a very much different kind of a teacher for whatever you went to school for and what, that you studied. It's a very much different kind of a teacher that has to practice, if you will, uh, what he is preaching. You see, when I stand in front of those students twice a week and I'm talking to them, I'm looking at people at FIU that are bellmen in hotels, that are desk clerks, that are assistant managers, that own their own restaurants, that are chefs in restaurants, that are cooks in restaurants that are waiters and waitresses, they are practicing in the industry. And if I tell them a story, uh, if I tell them a little bit of a story, they go out and check it out that very same afternoon or that very same evening. Now worse yet, even more impossible to the situation is the fact that I own a restaurant that's in that market and I'm teaching a class called restaurant management and another one called restaurant marketing or restaurant merchandising. Uh, to them. You understand that <clears throat> when I'm standing there talking to them, telling them how restaurants should be run, they're not believing a word that I'm saying because I'm telling them things that are contrary to their personal experience in terms of the industry, and they're determined to drive very quickly from the classroom up to my restaurant to see if I really am telling the truth or if I'm telling a lie. So I drive very quickly when I leave that classroom because while I'm standing there talking to them, I suddenly realize, last night we didn't do that in my place. How can I be telling them to do this in theirs? So whether it's pride or whether it's fear, I want to tell you something. Teaching is a very good experience. It's a super part of my work week. And the reason why is because I have to remind myself of the fundamentals of the business. And this business truly hasn't changed. Management has changed a bit, but the industry really hasn't changed. Hasn't changed at all. Let me switch to people now and away from food. Let me switch to people for just a minute and say to you this, if the manager is important at the front door, if the manager commits the operation to excellence from the front, which he does, whether it's a hotel, a pub, or a restaurant, which he does, there is no doubt about that, he will not be embarrassed no matter what. It has to be straightened out in terms of the public if he is there. I commit myself to the front door. When I say commit, that doesn't mean I just say the words to you. That means that literally when I'm not there, somebody has to be scheduled to work it. That means that when I go away from the front door, I better get a temporary substitute for just a minute because there's nobody else there. I am obligated to be at that front door. And I know the minute I quit obligating myself, I'll walk around the restaurant, I'll look to see if things are going all right, and then I'll go home. Or I won't be there. I'll go back in the office and read a magazine or do the paperwork, and I'll be ignoring the public. And so I just know from years of experience that I have to station myself in the dining room, literally put myself on the schedule so that I will be present whenever, whenever I'm in Fort Lauderdale, I will be present and at that front door of that restaurant, working just as anyone else would work. They're handling the people that are coming in. And any paperwork I have to do, I can do in the middle of the night uh, between midnight and five in the morning if I can't figure out somebody else to do the paperwork. I quickly figure out somebody else to do the paperwork on that, in those situations. Because I have learned that if, if it's a trade-off between sleep and me doing the work, I'd much prefer to sleep at night than to be doing the work. All right, the idea then of the right system of people, the right kind of people. The people that we want working for us are those that have the sparkle and the pizzazz to represent us well. The nice people. We want them to give away the gift of friendship. Eh? We want them to be very nice, and that is not a social thing as to whether, whether they will serve or not. They have to be nice people first. Start with the nice ones. What? How do you hire personality? How do you do that? How does a restaurant or a pub manager, hotel manager do that? He, he doesn't have a personnel department necessarily. Uh, he, he's got to do this himself. 
Well, yeah, we have a couple basic questions in terms of the interview that we look for. One of them, and the key question, I suppose, but, uh, is, is that involves both factors. Is it, you know, we're going along with the interview and we're not, we're addressing the application and how, where they've worked before and how they're going to get to work and can they work weekends and can they work nights and what does their other half do? Does their husband or wife work and how many children do they have and do they have two cars or one car and we're asking how they're going to get to work and we're being very serious and all of a sudden we look them right in the eye and say, what's the funniest thing that ever happened to you? Some people look at you. And they say, I don't know, I guess nothing funny has ever happened to me. 